hey, we're back in a baby. We got it. Smack up. What, what episode are we on? Should one 17? of them. April 21st, 2006. We're going peatless this episode. We lost him. We sent him to Japan after his uh, attitude last week. He yad himself to, to Japan. He's trying to find a Japanese person to scream West Side right now, dirtying himself. He's West in side. Akihabara. My favorite spot. <laughs> Ray Mysterio's favorite spot. <laughs> Fuck. Oh, you know, he's up in Sotembori. The oh. what? <laughs> Tell me about it. <laughs> oh, there's a big crab on a building. Yeah. Oh, sick. Can we get some pictures of uh, Japan here? Hey, yeah, editor yeah. Ty, let me... No! Dude, that's Korea! What are you doing? Put the... oh, Dude, that's my... Japan! What's wrong with you? Editor Ty, come on, dude. For real? Editor oh. Ty is telling us how he really feels. 10,000 Patreons. We will record a <laughs> smack up from Korea. Do 20,000, you get to pick which Korea. <laughs> Ooh. Man, this was Make a good episode, happen, guys. Yeah, it wasn't bad. Yeah, this is the first time I watched a SmackDown like in its entirety. Usually I split them up like 40 minutes. If, and I sat there and watched the whole thing. It felt like a breeze. Like I look up and I'm like, damn, it's almost over. That's crazy. This should have been the SmackDown after WrestleMania. This was a good show. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess because of the delay of the European tour that they do every year after WrestleMania, maybe that was just yeah. kind of the holdup and last week was a Is nothing episode. Is that what's episode. going on? Is that why Raw had to have another episode? Because on the Raw, they had this nice little thing where the pay-per-view is all tied up perfectly. Yeah. And now we have another episode. You have to do another one. Yep. Yeah. Well, we're getting the opposite here, it sounds like, because we are actually getting a... I mean, we're not going into a pay-per-view anytime got a while. soon, but... Yeah, yeah we got no. Judgment Day. You know there was, like, not a lot going on, though, because there was a Raw rebound. Oh, Ugh. God. Yeah, man. yeah, fuck that. We're live in Spon St. Louis. Sponsored by AutoZone. We got the Raw yeah. fucking... Uh, what was it? Stadium. Got the look. I hate that look. I hate that I'm looking at the same show. Give me a little something different once in a while, and I, please. And, and you can really tell because nobody on SmackDown is doing all that with the with the fireworks being taped to the corners. That's that's just Kane's it's, thing. It it's also kind of funny because like all the backstage segments on these tape shows are definitely like f recorded in one take a week prior because yeah, yeah. like they're like, hey, uh, here's a backstage segment with Booker T and Matt Hardy, and Matt Hardy is just Booker. I'm gonna win dude, this match, dude. I don't. I, I don't mean to cut you off, but like, I, the like opening like promo was good, and and they used the same music from the Saturday Night's main event. Yeah, it was like that. Which type is of... just a, like a bussin' bussin' theme right there. What we've seen from Matt Hardy up to this point, what? How can I take this man seriously? We just watched him. What was that last week what, where he uh, beat mean, Animal dude? in 17 seconds? Yeah, and died by the hand. A road warrior animal mean, a couple weeks ago. Matt Hardy said he's been to hell and back, and he bows to no man. Where has he been? He had like one singles match. <laughs> uh, hell. Oh wait, no, he got killed by <laughs> Finley hell. that one time. And the episode that came out on the YouTube, youtubecom slash you don't have to do this. Hello. On March seventh was when Animal uh, knocked his lights out for the Money in the Bank qualifying. So he, Matt Hardy's done nothing but just get fucking jobbed out. Jobbed out, and when he wins, it's like, really? Cares. <laughs> so I this, guess this should have been on Velocity Heat, brother. <laughs> Booker T cuts a pretty good promo. He's just talking with that cadence that he's already the king. Does he know? Does he know? I don't. Know. He says everyone is going to be is jealous of him. Which I mean, fair yeah. enough. I mean, look at them, the power couple yeah. right there. Yeah, Booker T has had like the most longest running marriage in wrestling at 2006. And it opens up the show surprisingly like those those like little vignettes right beforehand were short and to the point and then went right to a match and I was like like whiplash. A long match too. Cuz like uh, relatively long. We had a fucking sermon on last episode of Raw at some point like, you know, Vince is starting his religion. And on this is like wrestling. Wait a minute. Hold up. Wait, we got wrestling on the show. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, we do that on the show. Surprisingly, there's a King yeah, of the this, Ring tournament. <laughs> this this is... episode of SmackDown starts like a current episode of Dynamite. Yeah, I, I it thought it was like, very hey, good opener. Wrestling. And it had a commercial break. Matt Hardy made it to a commercial break. You know what? 
I need my my co-host Naram to talk about this bad boy right here. This opening oh, match. It's nasty. It's a good yeah, one. Yeah, this was a pretty good match. I actually really liked it. Uh, Booger comes in, he does his little dance, and then like he taunts, and then the pyro hits, which is a cool fucking... It's always cool to see do, that. Do, do, I, mean, do, do. I don't like that they don't use like that much pyro anymore. I get why they don't, but I wish they would go back to it. And then, are we going to do it? On the count of three? One, two, three. Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Oh, yeah! Dude, we skipped I Won't Be Denied. There was, there the was cold no open. I Won't Be Denied, yeah. There was a cold open. Oh, 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 yeah! Oh, yeah, that's right. But, uh, <laughs> Shit. Matt Hardy comes out, though. He rubs the throne with his shirt. He, you know, gives a little shine. Sorry about that, buddy. I don't think uh, makes it makes it fucking sweatier and greasier somehow. Yeah. Uh, did you guys see the sign that said Johnny Depp Fears Paul Virgil? Yeah. yeah. You know, I good. I would believe it. I think I think Johnny Depp would uh not go down the same alley as Paul Virgil. Johnny Depp's got awful work rate, brother. You know, so, Johnny Depp coming out of the alley, sees Paul Virgil, goes back into the alley, and you never see him again. That's why Paul Burchill is a good movie star, you know. What movies have you been in? Um, what's that movie? Edward Scissorhands. That was yeah. Paul Burchill. Well, yeah. Oh, what's another one? Uh, Alice in Wonderland. That was a good Paul Burchill. I love Paul Burchill in that movie. Scary movie. Am five. I am I mixing up the people here? No, no. I think so. okay, no, he got it in one. Oh, sick. Okay. So, anyway, this match starts, and uh, Booker T chops Matt Hardy so hard that he dies. <laughs> and I was, he was like, well, laying into him, dude. Oh yeah, he chopped like that. He chopped him pretty hard. Like he full chop to the chest. You just hear the. Yeah, and even with those Matt like biker gloves on. Yeah, that probably made it hurt more. Pretty funny thing from Taz here. He says Charmel just has a good smile, and that's it. Well, Michael Cole then asks, is that what you would call a Colgate smile? And Taz is like, I don't know what Colgate is, but what she's got a good smile. They're saying not a sponsor of the show. <laughs> not Do not sponsor. mention that. Do not <laughs> Michael Cole, there is a loaded chair waiting for you in the back. Matt gets a boot to the face, Booker T, and he hits a clothesline on him, swinging that breaker. Uh, there's a lot of pin attempts here, and that's because I realize this match goes on for, like I think, about 15 or so minutes. Yeah, it was a 15-minute opener. It's I That's think- nuts. <laughs> I yeah. think the psychology here for Booker is that get as many pin attempts as you can on Matt Hardy because he doesn't have the core strength to generate a lot of like the pushing out because he's got like like broken like baby hips. Are you telling because me? Because he that walks he's like a baby bottle? with a loaded diaper. No, and no. No, no not at all. Speaking of Matt Hardy's little baby um hips and his little diaper butt, uh <laughs> Booker reverses a twist of fate. And then he pushes Matt Hardy off him, and Charmel like lowers the rope down a little bit, so Matt just like completely falls and just flops onto the floor. Matt got I'm so sure. fucking bullied by the group. Oh my god, that was yeah, nasty. bullied. Dude, oh, the choreography. Yeah, he did. This episode was good because that was like a natural segue into a commercial. Like, I can't believe I'm talking about like even the commercial segue is good on SmackDown. Like, what what were they on this episode? What was going on? I loved it. Why was this not the main event? <laughs> yeah, this should have been the main event. This shouldn't have been the opening match. They should have done like the JBL shit in the beginning. Yeah, yeah. that's 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 how it normally goes. But you know, in Smack Up, we go a little reverse mode. We got Reverse Joe here. That's what I'm talking about. Hello. Anyway, though, we uh, we do come way, back way, from way. commercial. What? And Matt is presumably, I'm guessing, he was getting you know just destroyed in the ring by Booker T. Um, he does eventually. He reverses out of it. Uh, he hits him with a knee to the gut. Uh, Booger hits him with a suplex. Uh, and a p- Charmel, she's just Charmel. She rakes his eyes, man. So why is she raking Matt Hardy's eyes? <laughs> she like climbed into the ring to do it too. Yeah, somehow, no, was... and the ref just doesn't know what's going on. There's a lot of sh- stuff they were doing to like Matt. Like Booger, at some point, like after this, um, he pulls like Matt Hardy's hair. He like slams him onto the onto the mat, and then he just like pulls his hair. And you just hear the ref go, hey, watch the hair. Watch the hair. Yeah. Yeah, it was, I, I was surprised at how, like, they kind of made Hardy here in a way. Because, like, he was actually doing the bit that they keep pushing that he will never die. Yeah, like, Matt was just, like, he goes to the top rope, I think, like, a few <clears> times <throat> in this match. And 
one of them kind of goes into the end, but um, he does. Uh, Matt eventually does get the drop on Booker. He starts punching just the fucking hell out of this guy. Booker eventually reverses out with an elbow. Uh, Matt tries to, or uh, Booker, I should say, tries to pin him, but Matt gets out. Unfortunately, Booker does hit the bookend. Uh, he sets up for a spin and Rooney, but Matt dodges it. Uh, Charmel, though, again, distracts the ref. And while Booker is about to get hit with the twist of fate, he reverses it and just hits the nastiest low blow on poor Matt Hardy. And then he hits him with a scissor kick for the win. Yeah, it's a really yeah. solid opener. Yeah, really good match. And and to piggyback off of what you said about Matt Hardy, they like he didn't win. He's not advancing in the King of the Ring tournament, but they really make you feel like he might actually do something. <laughs> you like you, something because he's calling died. for the top rope spot all match. He gets it. He misses the the the, the backflip. Yeah. Um, I got a I got a shout out. He goes up to the second rope. He hits the oh yeah. yeah. Oh. For an absolutely devastating high risk maneuver, which is a jumping double axe handle. Come on, Matt. Come on. <laughs> well, he but couldn't get this leg dropping. <laughs> he still hits a really fucking mean bulldog. The bulldog he hit on Booker about the halfway point of the match. He like they like flew. It was sweet. Hmm. Yeah, this was a really good start to the show. Uh, until I saw the sign that said Alex Jones. Well, do, yeah, do they know? I wasn't feeling that dog. <laughs> they they know what's coming in later, the JBL segment. Tune in. <laughs> they had Matt Hardy die by JBL, Finley, Road Warrior Animal, and like the now that he finally loses the Booker, he looks like a credible opponent going forward. Yeah. How, I don't know how they I, did it. Booker thank you, Booker. And they actually had a, and they had Booker have a good match instead of Booker doing fucking Boogeyman. Oh, where's Boogeyman, by the way? Oh, they do mention that the restraining order is still in effect. Yeah, the restraining order just means he's not allowed on SmackDown at all, I guess. I don't know. Well, well, one not Teddy, there. Long. Teddy Long will not allow him in the arena no more. You get but a big Booker, winner mania, uh, <laughs> and you just never show up again. Booker ends up, uh, he goes up to the throne. You know, he's taking a seat in the throne. He goes, I'm the king of the castle. Uh, and then he puts on the crown, and he does like a little talk. He uh, does a little like week. karate move too. Yeah, like, he like, hits like the like crane or something. I think Booker forgot what a king is compared to like a karate master. I think he had him. Did stuff. they did they show the bracket afterwards? They yeah. did uh, uh, many many times. We got it many times tonight. Yeah, we got it like five times I think tonight. It, so it will be Booker T versus Kurt Angle. Oh my! Sometime in the future, I kind of like that they're doing one King of the Ring like tournament match and it's a slow burn yeah, yeah i don't because i don't think there's it's not next week it uh, ends next week thing. is in wembley yeah we got wild oh is that at wembley is that wembler yeah. Wem- it's in wemble oh my Are you god serious there's no way yep. it's in wembley no they said it's in next week it's in wembley that's I heard crazy. that's gonna be the biggest show in the history of wembley forever yeah it's gonna draw eighty two thousand people <sighs> wow Yep, it's in Wembley nope. Arena, and I'm looking up the attendance was around 7,500. You, yeah, multiply that by 50, brother. 75,000. That's, <laughs> that's not 50. 75 quintillion <laughs> people are going to be in attendance. That's, that's not a lot, really. I no. figured a SmackDown would get more, but I don't know. I guess even SmackDown in 2006 said we're all elite, brother. Uh, right. They announced that Benoit and Lashley are teaming up. They are they're the power couple. They just cannot stop teaming okay. up this year. They're just their boys, they're homies, they're great. And then or- Orlando Jordan and Finn Orlando Jordan's back. Oh my god. Yeah, I put that's uh I put Orlando uh, Jordan. That's crazy. Where's when was the last time he was here when he also got killed by Lashley? Didn't, didn't I think so? I think Benoit killed him. Oh, okay. I think Ben won. It was like a U.S. title match or something like that. I <laughs> wish we would get tag teams like this more often. Just Lashley and Ben is just two guys you wouldn't see tag teaming, but they just work so good together. I mean, it would be cool if they didn't tag like every other week. Well, ah, do they, they do this every other week? Remember, remember they were in like the six man tags and. Okay, yeah. but that's like different. A six man is like a lot different. It's like a give the tag, tag belts team. to them. Mercury and Nitro don't need them. Well, we'll get to that. Who wants to talk about the, the beginning, though, of the great JBL wink session? 
Oh, oh my goodness. Yeah, we we get a rundown of when JBL absolutely toastered Eddie Guerrero at, was it Great American Bash 04? Yeah, yeah. 04 yeah. Great American Bash. Yeah, yeah. For, for those that don't know, if you... Seeing Eddie Guerrero with blood on him, it's from that. No, it's not. I listen. No? I, I was watching it. I said, "That's it." And then I saw his face, and it didn't have blood on it. No, he wasn't that bloody. It was actually JBL. They had to like censor his the blood too. It was like oh. a weird, like gray. I was like, "What is going on?" I thought it was gonna be like a transition, but no. It's just anytime JBL's head was on screen, they censored the blood out and just make it black. It was and white. it was Judgment oh. Day 04. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just looked it up. Put that pick in. Put that in editor. Oh, oh, I'm gonna get fucking canned for maybe, that one. Maybe don't. We'll get demon. I'll be I'll be the Miz if that happens. <laughs> oh my! Oh no! We got um, Willie Regal, Paul, Paul Burchill, and William Regal. What the fuck is William Regal wearing? He's just Dude. now. <laughs> what's what he what looks he nuts. On? He's looking quite buxom tonight. He as looks. Well, he's he's but... got the buxom lunch on. It was it was a little less a little bucks. Different. I think he was going for like office lady sort of deal, like Yeah. Slightly less bucks than the office, or, or office like, lady. Or like sexy teacher or something like that. I don't know. The yeah, writers so... are so bored already. They forgot <laughs> there's like okay, yeah, so well funny line, though. we got this gimmick where Paul Birchell's a pirate. Yeah. Sweet. William Regal hates it. That's right. fine. Paul Birchell says you hate me? How about I beat you and you wear some stuff to embarrass you? Sweet. If you lose, yep. or if you win, you stop doing it. Awesome. And now Paul Birchall says, eh, you know what, just, just wear that. You know what, I don't like well, you in that. How about this? Well, the, well, the deal was that yeah, whatever William Regal yeah. will wear whatever Paul Birchall wants that week and Paul for as Paul long as Paul Birchall continues to win. And, and they team up. <laughs> Why yeah. are they teaming but, up? Um, <laughs> it was funny though. Regal's like, "Oh, you think this is funny? You think this is funny? I'm dressed like a walking, like a street walking taunt." And I said, "Oh my! <laughs> oh my!" Who was the one well, that broke up it. the team? Was it was it Regal? Because earlier in the year no they idea. were like, "I'm done teaming up," and then Paul Birchall said, "I have an idea," and then he walked off and then became a pirate like the next week. So it, I don't it know must who... have it must have been Willie Regal because he got upset. But at now they're Paul teaming up again. <laughs> Who yeah, cares? but like William Regal still like respects I respects a tough word, but he still has admiration for his student Paul Birchall, who he pulled out of the gutter and, and turned into something. Well, Birchall's got an idea. And he said, Regal, I'm sick of you dressing up as women. You're getting me horny. How about a teddy bear outfit? <laughs> and Regal's like, I have standards! A fucking teddy bear. This is ridiculous, bruv. Look at my You're little thinking. tail. Right above my buttock. I don't yeah, want Regal, to be a teddy. Regal was bruvd crazy. <laughs> and this was one of the bruv moments of they, all time. Just cut away, and we'll we'll come back because that's the only backstage oh, segment they film throughout the whole we thing. Come back for one this more. Like five times. Yeah. In the show. Uh, yeah, we got two others, but so now we got the opposite of last week. We get Mark Mercury versus London. They should have waited a good when they're in London. Match. Yeah, it was pretty oh, good. that would have been funny. That would have been funny. Um, I don't think it was as good as Kendrick versus Nitro, though. Maybe just because of Nitro, no. but London's really good, and it just didn't feel right. But Mercury was they, it was they were both really good. It just seems like whatever they were trying to cook during that match wasn't clicking. It just felt, yeah. I mean, like it felt like a diet match from last week. Yeah. Um, one of the cool things that I remember was London hitting the drop salt, but it looks so stupid when he's not moonsaulting onto somebody else because he just fucking flops on the ground. He like kicked, he kicked Mercury so fucking hard he backflipped and then just like landed on his stomach. <laughs> I'm like, what are you doing? What did, you just hurt yourself. What did you guys think about what Taz said before this match started? Oh, with Molina. Oh yeah. my god. Yeah, what did he say? I wrote it. This is one of the only notes I took. Molina on the show. um is wearing like a pink outfit, pink dress. And there Taz and Cole are just like, oh she looks good at pink. She pink's like a good color on Molina. And Taz, like at the end of it's just like, I like the pink. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, alright, Taz. Taz Taz was but, on one today. What else did he say during the Matt Hardy match? Oh, he said oh, um Matt, uh, Michael Cole was referencing 
like Matt Hardy's gimmick about he like he refuses to die, his never say die yeah. attitude. And then Taz is like, Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> I was Stop. like, damn, dude. What's wrong with the ta- Taz? Come damn. on, man. He's ready does to go Taz to no. He's he's ready to go to ECW. He's what, sick of this. What the... does Taz know? <laughs> All right. All right, fellas. We gotta talk about the sponsors for this week. But we haven't even gone through the match. Well, the, the well, yeah, they say the sponsor before okay. the match starts. Yeah, you're right. All right, so SmackDown is brought to you by Tom Cruise's Mission Impossible Three. Ooh, good what did you guys think of that one? You guys like that one? I've I I seen the one. third one. I've seen the first Ooh. two. <laughs> Five Patreon subscribers will watch uh, Mission All Impossible seven. Three. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about that. We'll do that for twenty uh, patrons. Tag body spray. Did any of you guys use this? No, I was a little uh, other, too young other, for that. Other people at the junior high would be using some shit like so, this. It's very when, true. When I was, this was probably when I was in middle school, and I remember like in fifth grade, you had the little sex ed thing where the teacher came in and talked to all the kids about puberty. And they're like, dog, we're 10. Why? <laughs> and then they're like, your pits are about to stink. Here's a goodie bag. And they gave us like Old Spice like deodorant and shit so like i used old spice because of that because i'm like this is deodorant that they gave me i'll use it so i never really used like axe or tag until like high yeah. school i used a lot of axe like they you know, i think they set you on the right high path. school the typical high school smell you know just ugh. like i can already be <laughs> like i can already feel like i remember that smell of axe just excruciating through the, the halls it's not a good smell if you are a zoomer um, and you don't know what tag or axe body spray are, uh, consider yourself lucky. Do they still do that? I hope not. I think axe still exists. I don't there's know. There's no way tag still exists. exists. That shit was real. No, there's no way. Oh, they had tag. Remember the other one was called Bod? Bod. Yeah, no, we'll get those commercials, I think, next year, 2007. <laughs> oh, I want Lord. your Bod. Your Bod. Bod. And then well, you have the guy running up and down the fucking steps. <laughs> And yeah, speaking dude, of sweat. bad smells, the <laughs> last sponsor is Burger King. Ooh, what was what was popping in two thousand six? Burger King. You know they had the crown nuggets. Sneak so. King. Oh, man, yes, yeah, Sneak King. Maybe maybe we'll we'll have to play that. The Burger King games were had to have come out around this time. Yes. Yeah. No. Definitely, it was two thousand six or five. Definitely. Ooh, I found an old commercial where they were talking about uh, the Superman Returns set. Oh, for Brandon the... Ralph, the legend? Yes. <laughs> oh, a good movie. It's a good Superman movie. I, I liked it a lot. I thought he was very good as Superman. And yeah, but he... you, love him, you love him more as the Adam or whatever. Yeah, that, yeah, he was definitely like a better character as the. Well, this is not a DC podcast, <laughs> buddy. We're not talking about the CW. Maybe, maybe, maybe one day. Eventually, Arrowverse air, episode by episode will never finish. Nah, <laughs> I still haven't suffer. watched the last two seasons. Oh my god, fuck that! And show. I never will. <laughs> Anyways, Paul London wins. Hey, come Whoa. on! I mean, the match was good. <laughs> come on. I mean, yeah, there were. Really, I mean, like again, like there's not. Do Look, you have anything that you want to like talk about? No, there? no. Yeah, I mean, I, I saw London getting. Um, he got shizzled by Molina. Oh, okay. and I said, "Damn, why couldn't that have been me? Why couldn't it should have been me?" Been me. And uh, what's it? Nitro like lays out uh, London, or rather, Can Joey you... Mercury lays out London, and then Nitro does a yeah, slingshot. That, this did feel like a fucking dynamite because like they're fucking in the ring. The ref's there. He can't control. You know, uh, was it? They mentioned it on commentary too. The ref can't control what's going on here. Mercury was fighting uh, Kendrick in the ring, and I'm like, well, "How's this not DQ?" Ah, uh, well, what can he do? You know, I wouldn't say it was as good as the first match, but like again, like a pretty solid was, match. Like, like I'm excited for when they do have a title match. It was just also like fun to watch. I think um, there was there was like good stuff. Like London does like a mule kick that just looked nuts um he also london just does like a huge crossbody like yeah. to mercury that, i think that's that when like, that spot was happening with the uh, mercury and kendrick fucking around and then that yeah. happened yeah he just like that man flew into the air that was an incredibly look, good looking spot it's so um, cool to see like this stuff in 2006 because you just don't expect it 
not in WWE, like probably in like you know Ring of Honor, obviously, but like yeah. not like mainstream television. And again, no, if, any, if any of you guys, you fellas in the audience, like, you know, the three people that watch the show, they got, like, any heat, velocity tapes that they're just hanging around in 2006, send them my way. They're not going to get distributed. I would love to just watch it and review it for everybody. That'd be fun. Or if you're one of our 5,000 subscribers watching this 10 years into the future, and you're going back in time to just kind of, you know, look at our stuff, you know, send that our way. Yeah, I'd love to watch yeah. it. You know, um, the, the also, one guy watching in, like, 2050, and he goes, dude, I got the tapes. My grandpa had Ty, it. And then... Ty's going to get, like, a Discord he, message. He lost, it, he, he lost it. He's already fucking out. Like, the whole series is done. We're going to try to review Velocity as our kids are screaming in the background. Oh, my. No, they'll be they'll be doing it for me. Go ahead. I love that's that's why link, brother. <laughs> um, there was a, This is also, the, I think, the second time Taz gets annoyed with bullying and screaming. Uh, they, oh, yeah. they zoomed this, this in. This was a sustained. This was a yeah. sustained scream. This was so the, this was me when I see Natalia come out on a pay per view. Yeah, nowadays. yes. The first time she does it, Taz is like Cole's like annoyed about it, and Taz is like, "Well, how about you shut up, Cole? How about you shut up so I can just listen to this?" All right. <laughs> the camera but guy was she, on one, dude. Oh, dude, when it does the one where it zooms into her screaming, Taz it's is just, just like, like teeth. She's she's still screaming. All you see is teeth because, like, the way she's cupping her mouth, it's just like, <laughs> yeah! <laughs> like, oh my god. You just hear Taz go, she's still, Shut up. She's still screaming. Shut up! <laughs> He's, like, visibly annoyed by this point. How do you feel about if Joey Styles was here hearing that scream? Do you think he would kill himself? Probably. I would probably kill myself if Joey Styles was here. <laughs> I'm probably gonna cut that out. <laughs> just, just leap over. Just censor over. Me. Don't be a coward. <laughs> or, yeah, or just put, like, how would you feel if Joey Styles was here? He'd probably unalive himself. <laughs> Joey Styles, I'm gonna hang you from Titan Tower. Um, <laughs> we're yeah. So Paul London does does get the dub on this after uh, was it just a roll up? Mm-hmm. Yeah, another another roll up again, just like last week. So, last been week it a lot felt, of dubs on him. The last week it felt hit... real. Not this week though. Damn. This week felt like a 2K game because Mercury like hit the taunt, and then that's when he got rolled up. Yeah. You, know, you got caught like him. You can't be something <laughs> mid-match. You really can't. Uh, backstage, we're we're dealing with another Paul Burchill bit. And yes, we are. he's like, Regal, and he's got the fucking teddy bear class, or like, just suit on. And it's just like, what is he looking like? It's just like, what? This this looks so cheap. Wow, <laughs> yeah, the bear has think lipstick that's, on. I think that's the bit, like, that's fucking, like, cheap. And it's like, what is he wearing? Yeah, these costumes, like, not just... I don't even like one. Picnic. They all look bad. Uh, yeah, sick Yogi Bear reference, William Regal. Did did they make another, like, illusion about, like, what he was going to wear next? Or they just cut I don't it? think they did. I it's don't... So... No, they, they cut to the next one. It's so after. bizarre because I don't remember in the lexicon of everything of Paul Burchill being like a big deal but he's on every single episode in some sort of way like he was like a focal point of at least they one story they probably weren't intending to push him but like, he's there like every time like even when he wasn't a pirate they had I, backstage had segments to have been like an idea if they're gonna push this guy like crazy and they probably just decided not to right yeah I mean he's a good wrestler but I, we know that means nothing in the WWE Maybe that's, yeah, that's at the end of the run of Smack Up 06, we can like look at who was in the main event scene the most. I think that'd be interesting. I would love to compile like a statistic, like statistic sheet of like who's been in the main event of WWE of 2006. Like who's the most prominent figure? I think probably it'd be John Cena. John Cena and like Kurt. I, or I would Ray. think it'd be Batista, but he's just injured. He'll be back eventually. I don't actually know. Put when, your votes but... in now. In... So apparently, <laughs> in, in the UK, Paul Burchill had like a segment on TV that was played during ads called Burchill's Monster Moments. Why is he so big? <laughs> they love him. I mean, he has been undefeated to this point. To be fair, like as a singles person. So I. So what did he? What did he do in this Monster Mayhem or whatever? It was just like bits of him going crazy. 
like in wrestling matches. Oh, all right. That's cool. I wish he would have an actual match. Well, you know, keep waiting. You know, well, did they then what did they recap Kurt Angle after commercial? Yeah, yeah they they, uh, they do. Yeah, yeah, we get a a, a SmackDown replay of last week. That's... From the first match of the King of the Ring tournament, it was Kurt Angle versus Randy, uh, where Kurt beat Randy by submission, uh, leaves him in the ring, runs back out, goes Kurt mode again, and was, cinches in another disgusting ankle lock. I was so irritated that I think I forgot to even mention how bad Randy looked in that match. And, like, he just looked like a fool. After hey, being, like, hey, the main do you know, guy. And I know, you he, know why he looked bad? Yeah, then then he do something and they like cut him out for a while. Yeah, he's getting suspended right now indefinitely. That's, that's so bizarre. Like even in the like uh, promo or not the promo, but the I can't even think of the word blank and hard. But yeah, the recap. Sorry, the recap of it. He just looks like a like a buffoon, even though he was the guy that beat Ray at No Way Out. Yeah, but that was a fluke because he cheated. Mm. Also, Kurt Angle, brother. We well, Randy, guess what, pal? You ain't up there. You ain't looking up there. He's in hell. All right. Real so quick, is Chris I Bill. gotta mention this. <laughs> I was gonna, damn it. And so is Chris <laughs> Wall. Go on. Go on. <laughs> I, so I looked up, like, I had to look up, like, did, uh, whose fault was it that Paul Virtual never got, like, a crazier push? And I'm on the wrestling forums, and this guy says, from what I remember at the time, there were big rumors that Vince wanted to do an incest angle with with uh, Paul Virtual and Katie Lee on Raw. Oh, that's Let's right. What is it. with him in incest? <laughs> so this was real? Yes, I remember because Katie Lee Virtual was like, I think that was when they were on Raw. But this is this doesn't explain why he never got pushed, because he was on SmackDown. He left. He comes back. I think he might, maybe he got injured. Because he was in SmackDown vs. Raw 07, maybe in 09, but he wasn't a pirate. He was, just, he was just a Brit. Apparently, the WWE did try to get him over as the guy, but I guess it's just he never he got over. Like, he was like the prototypical Drew McIntyre of his time. Because then I think Drew McIntyre got the, like, if I remember correctly, Drew McIntyre was the chosen one. And he kind of mm-hmm. had a similar gimmick to Paul Burchill, but then Paul Burchill was hanging around Katie Lee, and then they tried to make Katie Lee the star. And I don't, I don't think that ever uh, did they change her name. I don't even think they're actually siblings. No, they her I'm sure they're not. But her work name is Katie Lee Burchill. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. No, she didn't. She didn't really have a like career that long after that. It was oh eight. Okay. Yeah, she probably bounced around like TNA and whatnot. But yeah, I remember being a kid getting uh, disgusted by what they're <laughs> doing because I was like, "What is this? What? They're they're siblings. This doesn't make sense." Thank you, Vince. Thank you, Vince. And your infinite wisdom. Thank you, Vince. Thank you, Vince. Oof! I know this list is old because it says it's called the. This is from the Sportster. It's fifteen re- uh, WWE wrestlers who had their push taken away from them, and number five or six is like Cody Rhodes. Yeah. Ooh. True at the time. Yeah. Dude, we'll I, get it. I can't wait to talk about that stuff. 2011, 2012, 2013 is a, is a trip. Yeah, in the year 3000, all <laughs> the fans, check it out. That's right. Speaking of uh, people in hell, we got Chris Benoit Whoa. and Bobby Lashley teaming up against Orlando Jordan and Finley. Orlando Bobby Jordan Lashley's gave up. Alive, man. What are you talking about? Well, I mean, no, he's, he's doing good. I love Lashley. Yeah, he looks the exact same as he did yeah, yeah. in 2006. <laughs> Orlando Jordan looks uh, bored. He didn't even I gotta do his say, OJ like beginning bit and during his entrance. He's just look, giving up. All of Orlando Jordan's bits have been officially revoked. Enough of Orlando Jordan. I've had it up to here with him. But I will say Chris Benoit, the mustard and ketchup gear does not look good at all. Like last week, this no. week... This week is ketchup and mustard, not mustard and ketchup. The 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 yellow on red looks good, and he actually bothered combing his hair this week. So, I'm proud of him. Good for him. Good for him. Did 
Finley get to do a whole lot in this match? I don't really remember. Like I think he Not started really. off because once Jordan gets in there, Benoit and Lashley take him to town and just uh, no. <laughs> kill him. Yeah, it doesn't really do much of this match. No, he puts Benoit in a couple of wrist locks and then tags jo- uh, Orlando Jordan in. <laughs> um, and uh, Jordan, I mean, he has a, a pretty good like uh, wrist lock sequence i guess is the best thing i could say about this match regarding him um and he's just like he's just working benoit for some reason orlando jordan gets to work chris benoit here um but eventually it you know breaks down benoit tags in lashley lashley absolutely murders him for the hot tag oh he murders uh orlando bulldozes all the way to the corner to finley boom bumps him off the ring uh i i he, you know, starts running back and forth with that crazy speed he has. Hits Orlando with a disgusting spear. Oh yeah, dude. Yeah, you that know, was nasty. What what it, what made him put so much stank on that bad boy? He <laughs> also had crazy. enough of Orlando. I want you to kill him. I want you to kill him. And then him. that wasn't even enough because then he picks him up and dominator him. Oh, and it just, it's yeah. over. Yeah. And like last, or, uh, Finley couldn't do much at this point because Benoit just like beamed him, like he ran across the um, the mat himself. It just like it felt so short post. compared. To, it was six it minutes, did. but it was like, a fun it match. Felt, it felt so much shorter than what it was. Yeah, this was I. I it was short. Um, you know, Finley, as much as like he's saying, he's like always oh, a tough Irish bastard. He loves to fight. It's like, well, he didn't really do much. He just kind of sat there. And yeah, there yeah, was he, someone... he was being weighed down by Orlando Jordan, oh, who true, sources true. tell me this is well, might, this might be one of his last well, appearances. On maybe SmackDown. maybe Finley just couldn't match up to the gold standard. Though. I I do yeah, have a fair. question about this, and I do have an answer to it in a way because it's me. why are these guys teaming up? And then you look at the King of the Ring and you go, well, Chris yes. Benoit and Bobby Lashley are fighting in a match against other people. Yeah. Finley. Chris Moore versus Finley's uh, at some point. And Bobby Lashley versus Mark Henry? Yep. Yeah, they say that's, is, that's the next match. Why is Mark Henry Probably. not here to build up the the match? So, yeah, because that's their Wembley match. That's the next why is, match. why is Mark Henry not here in the tag team? And it would have been a pro- what Because they didn't want Finley and Mark Henry to lose because they lost i don't think they wanted anybody that was in the tournament to lose that's what i, I think know, yeah and that's the answer like I'm, I'm like i have an answer orlando jordan is there to eat the pin but yeah. it doesn't make sense in the terms of i want to build up the king of the ring tag team like let's have a tag team match with the people in there heels versus faces and then not have mark henry not even show up Yep. Like it's I don't just... know. I guess <laughs> it's made. I don't know. I guess the logic is they didn't want to make because if Finley eats the pin now, he doesn't look strong. Yeah, but if they had if Ben Wall versus Henry, Finley next doesn't. week, it would have felt like oh, they're saving Mark Henry for it. maybe he's out. Oh sure. But but the timing doesn't make sense because now it's like you're not building up the next match. Stuff. I don't know. Uh, it's I mean, it's again it just like it's match. so small. It's such a small gripe, but like the writing is just so like a little bizarre that like as a, a fucking nerd like me it goes huh oh, look, it's all almost I can there say, Ty just replay the just re- keep replaying the part where Lashley just absolutely demolishes uh, Orlando Jordan with the <laughs> just keep <laughs> running that back through your head and everything will be fine Peacock left me off the leash let me use some footage please I'm not trying to copy get copyright struck but goddamn, please when we uh NBC when we go Universal. when we eventually go to a SmackDown at some point, uh, and we get to a bad bit, I'm just gonna be running that through my head. <laughs> All the good memories. We uh All we right. have another Killing great American celebration. Yeah, and, uh, another JBL is JBL wank session. JBL. Can I talk about uh, this one? God, this fucking segment, dude. Why are oh, we doing God. this? 2004 right, is crazy, so... I guess. <laughs> This next uh, part of the JBL Great American Wank. Uh, again, it's from 2004. Uh, classic wrestling here. Uh, JBL is down at the Mexican border. And he is kicking illegal immigrants back into Mexico. 
Literally, you actually it's picked them so back. So insane. Uh, they, they cannot. They would never be able to get away with this today. No. no never a chance. I, uh, I mean, JBL in these vignettes, he's really just telling us what he felt. What he did here is just what he feels about this stuff. This is not a bit at all. This is real. Um, but yeah, he is kicking illegal immigrants back into Mexico in 2004. That's what JBL was up through that year. Classic. We're reaching the 20 year anniversary of that, actually. Oh, that's insane. <laughs> you can't just drop that. <laughs> yeah, we're old. Uh, anyway, shit. speaking of old. This week's WWE wrestling. WWE 24-7 presents this week's wrestling in history. Okay, so here's the thing about that. They showed this on Raw. And Did fold. they really? And oh. they had a segment after with Matt Stryker bringing up this bit. What? Or wait, Why? was it this bit? No, but so, all right, you... so, all right, so it was not this bit, but it was a the Rock vs. Stone Cold uh, promo. Okay, okay. It was uh, the one where he threw the bell into the ocean. This is the same one. Is this is the... Uh, the... This is, yes, it is the oh, Rock. Then it's the same fucking when he, one. When he tosses Stone Cold's title oh, into the Detroit River. Oh, fuck me. Yep. Yeah. Uh, de classic Detroit show, by the way. Um, if you haven't seen this episode of Raw, I think you should see it. Um, they then show Stone Cold's funeral. Uh, and then it cuts to Stone Cold driving a giant monster truck. And he crushes The Rock's car. And they mentioned it, too. It's a luxury car. And it's $40,000. No way. I did the math. A $40,000 car in 1999 is worth $75,000 today. Holy shit. Well, let that, let that sink in. Only in The Rock's America. That's <laughs> true. That's insane shit right there. Holy moly. But anyway, uh, Kurt will have his uh, title match. A rematch, I should say, against Rey Mysterio next week. Though. At Teddy. Wembler, no less. Teddy announces this match, and he's like, by popular demand, Kurt Angle will have his rematch, and they boo. Dude, it's so weird. <laughs> it's weird. They boo at first when they're like when he announces it, and then they're like, Kurt Angle. And then they start cheering. And then he's like, he'll have his rematch against Rey Mysterio. Like, I don't know if they thought he's going to have, like, a rematch with someone else. Maybe Randy or Orton. They're sick of it. I guess. I don't know. They, like, booed it at first. And then they were like, and they started cheering. So, who knows? The people of St. Louis, Missouri are really stupid. <laughs> True. I've if you're a patron and time. you listen to us, and you're from St. Louis, Missouri, you have to make a new account. A subscribe yeah. again to make up for it. <laughs> That's... Those, are the breaks, kid. Those are the breaks, kid. I don't make the rules. We are back in Paul Burchill's locker room. And Lord. this time, William Regal's dressed up like a chicken. He says, <laughs> if you make a Colonel Sanders joke, I'll kill you. How the fuck are they... Why the he doesn't fuck have a tail. He's got, he's, he, he's got a hole where his, where his, uh, his buttock is. Easy oh. access, I, th I believe, Willie Regal says. That's his, uh, that's his furry suit. And then... And then we come back, and Funaki's here. My my boy Funaki's here. This guy he's has just like no us, gear. for real. He just has a SmackDown shirt on. That's him. He's a SmackDown number one fan, but he's getting interviewed by... Yeah. 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 Crystal Marshall. Yeah. And... <laughs> she looks good. Does she? She looks good. Tell me about it. She's looking really respectful, bro. What else you want me to say? Oh yeah. Give me, the, give me the soundboard and I'll tell you how I feel. And she goes, Funaki. And he goes, Hey. And then and he turns around and the fucking camera like is getting a Dutch angle. And Funaki looks terrified. Yeah, it's the Great Khali's four feet taller than him. It's it is terrifying. Yeah. And then the Great I mean, Khali just fucking grips up like a like like a snow cone. Just grips up fucking the microphone from Crystal. And he points it to his mouth and he goes, Oh, Funaki, oh, great I'm going to break you in half. I, I think he I said it exactly like that. I'm that surprised. was a good Kali yeah. impression. Dude, I don't know how he said it like that, dude. I was I was pretty shocked and I was I was like, Whoa, great Kali kind of sounds normal. You know, normal. Yeah, he's not he's not screaming or mumbling into the mic. 
That's cool. And, Good job. And then we woke up from the dream and we replayed the clip and he's and- actually just <laughs> shouting. Presumably he's just shouting slurs. And then we, we woke up oh, and then we woke up and we're Mark Henry again. And he got the match against Undertaker player. And I'm like, no, 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 not again. No, I don't no, want to. No, no, no. And then okay, I get no. and then I get put no, I get fucking hit with another leg drop. And I get sent to the fucking Shadow Realm again. That's fine. Here's the great Kali cameo you think again. Great Kali's back. <laughs> um, I, guys, please, you got to end my loop. <laughs> I've been That's stuck right. here for anyway, three is, weeks. I got it. I got you, fam. But WWE Smack of the Night, brought to you by AutoZone, is Kali killing the Undertaker two weeks ago. Great. Awesome. <laughs> Bruh. Bruh. Guys, I'm back. <laughs> Here's the great Kali cameo again. <laughs> All right, so yeah, they come out. Um, they got a match here, if you want to call it that. Man, why the whole... fuck are they putting Funaki in with Great Kali? They had him fucking get brainbustered by Kid Cash in the first episode. He said, like, "Get it, well, got it, good," and then Funaki died, and we haven't seen him for like four months, and then <laughs> now he's back to get killed by Great Kali in five minutes. I have five minutes, five fifty-five seconds. Whoa, dude! Funaki was in the last chance qualifying match for the Money in the Bank, dude. A couple like was a it, month ago, the, dude. What the Battle Royal? Yeah, the Battle Royale with the Legend Sylvan. Oh man, where's he been? Is he on Velocity? Yeah, probably. Oh my guy, that's my guy right there. Uh, Kali, Kali puts beats the brakes off of Funaki. Theme song is honestly terrifying. There's something about that intro fucking guitar playing. Yeah, it's 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 like it sends shivers down your spine because you know you're about to get fucking crushed. Because when I was a kid and I watched Rey Mysterio get his head fucking squished, I was terrified. I always thought Great Khali was gonna win every match. Because I'm like, there's well, no way I anyone mean, can beat this guy. He, as Cole says, he's like a young Andre the Giant. I I can see that. Yeah, no, as a as a kid growing up watching it, he was. Terrifying. Yeah, but I didn't Great Kali is just wrestle. naturally that big, though, right? Yeah, he doesn't have like gigantism or whatever. Does no, he? Oh. He's just like that. Yeah, he's just like that. Andre the Giant had like cheat where he kept getting bigger. Mm-hmm. He had the cheat coat on. Yeah, there was not much he could really do in the match. He he grabbed him by the neck and then chopped him, got a big boot, and then the double handed choke slam. Always devastating because he's so tall. And, yeah, I would uh, not. Got the dub. I'm not taking that. It's it's just over, man. Like I'm not. You I'm take good. that choke slam from Gray Collie. You're taking that the long way. <laughs> no, please. You're going all the way down. Speaking of the long way, now Regal's dressed up as the gorilla, and he threatens. This is the worst gorilla costume. It's I've so ever bad. Seen and he says, "If I had a banana, I would stick it up your ass." He's Does he the fingers around, dude? Yeah. yeah. Oh god. I wonder what he'll dress up as next time. Well, we're about to find out because the Gemini come out. My boys, um, like, getting the main event spot. Oh, this is what I've been yeah, talking they are about. The main, huh? And Pete dodges it yet again because he's a little coward. <laughs> they, uh, <laughs> they come out and immediately Colin and Taz do the which one's Jake and which one's Jesse bit. Man, they got yeah, a fucking main event One of them, one of them spot. has a slightly taller sock under his Sick. Boot. <laughs> yeah, these guys are both like if, if the bald FTR guy. We're the same. <laughs> if both FTR were bald, dude, it's like you just wouldn't know who's who. Oh my god! What was it? Uh, well, one would bring I, a gun I, I kinda, to the I kind of like FTR segue though. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> did, <laughs> did um, what's it called? Did uh, Paul Birchall do his entrance this week? Because it felt like he did. He did. Okay. He did. Yeah. Okay. So. No, he came out. He he looked, um, uh, uh, quite dour. I'd say. He was a little bit less bored, happy than man. last week. I don't week. know what happened. He looked at the ring and went, hmm. He did He's a little swing. He threw the beads. And then William Regal came down. What is this supposed to be? Like a swashbuckler? He's dressed up as um, a swashbuckling version of Tony Khan. Oh, <laughs> that makes sense. Um, and then as he comes out, does he like fall over again? I think he like nearly trips. Yeah. He's got like a funny um, hat on with peacock feathers. He looks All fine. I remember he looks is at some point the wig goes like flying off him and yes! Taz puts it on. And Taz <laughs> looks exactly Taz, like Taz has... looks so happy. Taz wears it. And it cuts to him and then it cuts really fast away from him. Blink and you'll miss <laughs> it type moment. Yeah, I don't know why they did that. Um, Man, 
this match could have been something, but Paul Burchill just decided, I don't care. I'm not don't fighting. Don't lie these. like that. This match could not this have been would have been the Jim and I are in it. This match would don't have been lie. five stars if Paul Burchill because these are my guys. Don't yeah, don't Paul put Virgil. don't put that lie on my name because I've been gassing these dudes up all show. Gassing them up and them being good are two different things. No, no, no. I've been gassing them up saying you guys need to watch this and then they wrote Paul Burchill to say I'm good and so they hate me. Well, Paul Burchill didn't want the, any of that smoke, so yeah, that's fair. These guys are genetic freaks. Yeah, yeah. You and know what? Paul Burchill's smart. I take it you back. You look at. I apologize. You look at Jake Jesse, and you're like, I'm not fighting that guy. I wouldn't want to fight the Gemini. That guy is like big and bald. They should have actually made a trios team. They should have added Bobby Lashley to that team. Yeah, you know, when, three big and bald guys. Come on. When Burchill was in the ring, you want to know what he was doing? He was moving. He was getting forearms in the corner. He got a flying clothesline. He was dominant. And he tagged in Regal and then just said, man, you suck, dude, and then left. Well, what that really shows is that William Regal is actually not good. Yeah. I mean, and here's oh, the proof. Yeah. Here's the proof. It's not that the Gemini are just so powerful because Paul Virtual is doing fine and just William Regal. The, it's just not that good. I guess move, the streets of Blackpool aren't that tough. The move that the Gemini used, the what, the, what they call it, the cross trainer, the yeah. spinning it, butt buster, yeah. It looks so dominant in the like in the video game because I remember going through like the move list and I went, "Holy <laughs> shit!" Because they would like in the game, it goes so. Let me see if I can find like a clip. It goes so fast and like kills the guy, but they do it not so hot. I don't know if it's because Regal's in the weird go- outfit or not. Or maybe, not it's, it's just it's just like uh, like a like a clothesline. I don't know. Well, didn't they like? It might also like they put be their that the Gemini yeah. are like three hundred pounds and they just can't do it that fast. You can't say that they're the Gemini, dude. I don't think any of the. I think Paul Virtual got out because none of the Gemini are capable of taking a C four. Ooh. I don't know, dude. I think he could do a Spanish fly. I don't think Jake or Jesse. Well, have any enough leg meat to pull that off, brother? Get, get no one knows what a Spanish fly is at this point. <laughs> the guy yeah. who invented the move is your world heavyweight champion, but no one knows what that move is. It's the second move. It's like the other finisher, but no one we don't know what that is. Very true. Very true. Hey. Uh, yeah, Jim and I get the win in like two minutes, and that was your main event match. But we're still yep. we still got we got still got some show. Still they, got like 15 they do minutes left. ponder. They do ponder though. They're like. Well, the contract says that if they lose, if Paul Burchill loses, he doesn't have to do the costume anymore. So what's going on? I guess he didn't care anymore. Maybe he's had enough of humiliating Regal. Maybe he'll finally come to his senses next week. Tune in next week. Or I think they're going to be like, Paul Burchill is going to (laughs) use his pirate tricks and be like, haha, got him. The kid tag teams don't count. Oh. Tomorrow. Yep, and then Regal will defiantly like fight back because he's the good guy in all this. Yeah. Yes, and then the Gemini will kill William Regal. Yeah, uh, Simon Dean save us. <laughs> then uh, we got another great American celebration uh, promo leading up to the main event spot. Uh, yes, sir. we we got a little recap of WrestleMania 22, winning the U.S. title. Sweet. Sure, we know this. A Mania 22 recap with no big time. We get a pick of JBL um, over George Washington's face <laughs> on Mount Rushmore. It's goaded. Wow. So we're back at the Savage Center in St. Louis. They're looking up, and then they they like pan down, and the Miz is just chilling outside. He says, the Miz, the Miz in his like T-shirt that says "White Boy." White Boy. <laughs> <is> so <laughs> awesome. Thumbnail, you'll see him, baby. I love that White Boy. The we white boy Miz the... is here. <laughs> and he's, I need he to says, ask the Miz if he still has that. He's going to crash the celebration. He loves parties, dude. Uh, you can't have a piss without the Miz here, dude. And well, he tries to walk in, and Palmer Cannon says, Hey, what are you doing here, dude? Get out of here. And the Miz, network has canceled you. Miz is like, suspended what? by the network, bro. You, yeah, the network hates you, dude. Get out. You are canceled. Officially. Is this, is this the first canceling of yeah. a quirked up white oh. boy? Yes. It is. 
Palmer Cannon told the Miz, "You got to go change in the janitor's room, buddy." Miz oh my like, god! The Miz just Palmer have some Cannon fun. catches the Miz eating chicken. <laughs> he got chicken in Randy Orton's gym. <laughs> and then we never see Palmer Cannon again. So, well, I guess I guess the Miz said Uno Reverse, and it's over. Yeah, that's because but, Miz became the network. Oh, real? Actually, true. Yeah, the grittiest grinder I think out there alive is the Miz. He was on that shit for real. And then we got the raw rebound, and no one gives a fuck, so we ain't gonna talk about it. No. They okay? You guys have been telling me on the side. You, no, you guys, Ty, you have been telling me on the <laughs> side about what has been going on. Uh, the sad, sorry affair of Raw. Yes. And Raw down, and uh-huh. how disgusting that show is. Mm-hmm. I like watched this entire five minute like promo about what's been going on the past month for you guys leading up to backlash what is going on if that is the main event scene on that show get the fuck out of here it's been... raw down fuck you <laughs> it's been constant fucking handicap matches every week and there's still another one coming up on the next yeah, the fu- episode like oh oh the bit is they all can beat each other but it has to be a, a 2v1 where yes the team the whoever is on the handicap side wins or whatever Yep. Or who, whoever whoever is on the 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 tag team part of the handicap wins. What's going on here? <laughs> it's so thank, fucking bad. Thank you, Taz, with one Z. Now, not to the good shit. JBL, man. Oh man, this um, there's a lot to unpack here. Yeah, I mean, Jelena Hall comes out, her and her big inflated balloons, uh, respectfully. respectfully. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she goes um, out with a, with a red and blue balloon, uh, introduces the local high school marching band, yeah, and they really start sweet. playing. They start playing a ditty. It was really good. It was very like nice. So it was cool. And then um, once they surround the ring, uh, we get JBL's music, and out comes a Hummer limousine with the biggest car horns I've ever the seen ever. The biggest giant horn. eagle yeah. outside of the... Like a big inflatable and, and eagle. And an inflatable yeah, eagle, yeah. inflated the eagle. Yeah. This was cool. Like, this was like a celebration, you know? This... Not not last week. It was, last week was crazy because of the surprise steel cage from out of nowhere. That was a really good match. But, but this was like like the pomp and the circumstance. This uh, just not not you... so much the fighting the illegal immigrants stuff we've been getting all night. No, but this no, was no. good. JBL's real political beliefs were not great in this segment, but no, no. everything else was great. Well, it made me hate JBL more. So it's just, well, that's true. It did its job, I guess. But um, seeing, yeah, it's stuff like this. When I see stuff like this, even back in 2006, it just reminds me that WWE is so willing to spend like a ton of money just to create like a moment like this. And I think yeah. it's why, like, a lot of what they do, like, you can say, like, like oh, WWE wrestling is bad or boring or whatever. But, like, when they make, like, a giant moment like this, like, it, you do remember it, whether it was good or bad. I think the only issue with this segment that would have made it better is if we didn't have it, like, in the Raw arena and it had that big well, SmackDown fist behind them. Just oh, because it, it would have felt more, more like... Because if you look back on this... Like now, and we didn't know this was from SmackDown. You wouldn't know it was from SmackDown. Well, the ropes yeah. are blue. Were they blue? I thought they were black. Were they black? I, I don't... see. I don't you even remember. Look, it would have made it better too if the SmackDown fist like moved. So as like the balloons come down, oh. when JBL comes out, like it pushes the balloons out. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I will. I was watching this last part with my brother, and um, when JBL was like coming down out of the. Um, uh, the ramp part with like the Hummer was just first coming down. My brother it, like cuts to to Jillian Hall and her two balloons. My brother's like, did they really? She did all this, but she couldn't get more balloons. And then just as soon as he said that, all the balloons started raining in from <laughs> Titan Tron, which was awesome. It did look really sweet. And I'm like, oh, there we go. Okay, there they are. The red, white, and balloons for our American hero. Here's here's a question: Why is the United States Championship more important? Than the World Heavyweight well, Championship. It's just because JBL's doing it. It's his inflated ego. But he's like, but then we I don't care. But we don't care about the the World Heavyweight Championship. Hey, hey, we'll get into that we'll, because we'll, he we'll comes out. That. Yeah, he finally makes his way down to the ring. J- 
Jillian's looking great. The marching band is playing. JBL gets on the mic and says, oh, is that real it? Real quick. Real yeah. quick, though. Before yeah. JBL even starts talking, someone says, shut your mouth already. <laughs> like, you loudly hear someone in attendance before JBL starts talking scream, shut your mouth already. They were sick. <laughs> you didn't even I talk. I agree with that, man. You didn't say anything. I agree. Good oh, lord. Man. But, yeah, uh, JBL just looks disgusted at the display that Jillian... The image consultant Jillian Hall is prepared. He's like, this is it? I am the United States champion. This is all you can provide for me. The United States champion. I am an American hero. And I say it like that because that's how JBL that's says, how he it. says it. Yeah. He's going to say it about five more times tonight in this promo. Uh, and she is just like devastated. I would JBL, be so sad looking. JBL focuses back in on her. It's like, Jillian, you you did all this. You got all your, your overinflated balloons. Get out of my ring. <laughs> I was like, whoa, yeah, come on, JBL. That was not respectful. Come on. He says, this is why you could never trust the woman. Oh, my God. He also, what does he say about the kids? He calls them local Dude, refugees. hold on. No, hold, because we, we do not endorse no. the words of, of, no. of JBL here. Not at all. He calls them, but, yeah, he calls them refugees of a... Big brother program. That's so he, fucking dude, foul, yeah. He dude. calls he calls them inner city refugees that were dropouts from a big brother program. You know, when the when the marching band came out, I didn't notice that they were all black. And then they cut what? to them and I go, Oh my god, this is awful. <laughs> there the there fuck? is a quirk of white kid on here. Was he? Okay. Yeah. I was the, like, oh um, shit. <laughs> wow. them, these are high school kids, by the way. He this... tells them to go back to school, but then also says get a job. It's like, well, these are like ninth grade kids. Like, <laughs> I'm sorry, but he's speaking there. <laughs> Get a job. So How about you pick yourself up by your bootstraps, buddy? Oh my You're god, in sixth grade. Yeah, and he doesn't stop there. Job. And he says, no. to all of Ray Mysterio's 12 million illegals that watch him every week. Yeah, hey, what the fuck? God damn, dude. He, he didn't need to lay in. Are the 12 way. million illegals? He, was he on this shit all year? Because I feel like he wasn't. And then they were like, "Hey, remember when he was being racist in these promos?" No, he, he's, he, no, JBL's been doing the wrestling god bit up until now. He's been like racist last again. week, I think. <laughs> okay. Now he's now he's being racist yeah. again. Yeah, Look, it, I don't know why. Funny. I don't know why they're letting the guy that almost got fired, literally like a year ago in two thousand and five, yep. for doing something he wasn't supposed to do in Germany. Then, yep. And yeah, they're letting he, him go back to Europe to, a, a, after this. He also this tells crazy. Jillian when she leaves, or like maybe it's like after she left, he tells her to go back to the strip club and just go and go give lap dances like she used to. And it's like, dude, relax. Really devastating stuff. Yeah, she runs backstage crying. I was like, dude, dude, like speaking of real on? quick and all, like an off tangent. Um, on my job, I, del- I you know I'm in a different area than where I usually am, and. I had to deliver a package to this one place, and I was like, "Man, this this place is a little like like what is this place?" Because I had a bunch of just like statues and shit. I've never seen this before, and I'm parked outside, and I get the package, and I get out of the the van, and I look, and it's a Holocaust Memorial Center, and I'm like, "We have a Holocaust Memorial Center in the area? That's insane." Oh, wow. And I like had this like rush of oh god I hope I'm not like disrespectful at all because like you know like this is a serious place like I'm not I'm here to package bring a package in and I'm dressed up as a fucking delivery driver I'm gonna walk in there like what is this guy doing <laughs> and I walk in and it's like security up the ass and the guy just looks at me and he's all suited up and I'm like damn I look crazy and I'm like here you go sir and he's like. Thank you. <laughs> I was like, why am I scared? Like again, JBL doing that bit. How does he not have any shame in his heart about that? As and I'm just scared of a fucking security guard because I feel like I'm as, being disrespectful in a goddamn delivery driver outfit. Well, as we know, it's I, so you know, insane. But JBL now, this is just JBL. Right, but yeah, I'm just like, I real. like, I don't know how anyone could feel this way. It's insane. A uh, weirdo, man. Um, he says no one considers Rey Mysterio champion. Fair yeah. enough. He is the United um, States that's, that's champion. That's why we have Yassified Rey Mysterio as the champ. Look, take a look. There he is. I love him. He also says next week he's going to go up <gasps> against the Queen's best. 
No, that's why he's angry. That's why he's racist. He's mad that Yassified Black Rey Mysterio won the belt. Oh, oh my wow. God! I, how is that, How so, do we not piece that together? So right. he should have been Yassified, is what you're saying? Yes. Oh, there's no Yassified I'm... JBL. I get it. Well, now. hold on, hold on. No, don't, no. Get that off the screen right now. Stop. I do not oh need to see God. that. Get that, off. Get that off the screen, you fucker. Ew. But yeah, you know, did did uh, JBL say a lot about like America being bad other than just him being absolutely he, racist? No. He, just he is said, like, the American hero. So we have Kurt Angle, a guy in a promo earlier in the same year go, I'm not a fan of the black people. And now he's standing up to racism. Well, okay, Kurt. No, he way... said that in 2005, dude. No, it wasn't. It was in 06. Was I was it? at No New Year's Revolution. <laughs> when, yeah, when 05. Kurt said it, though, no, was... 06. We were, we talked about it on the pod. Oh, okay. <laughs> when Kurt said it, though, he was talking about how fickle the fans. Oh, he was he was a raw guy. To be fair, that is the difference. Yeah, yeah he maybe didn't know any about better. the fans being fickle. He's like, see, <laughs> they'll accept. They'll just cheer to anything I say. JBL. This is just how he actually feels. Oh, fair enough. Yeah. Kurt, as we know from his love life, that's not how he actually feels. This makes Ray look so fucking bad that he is the oh. World Heavyweight Champion. He's a part Dude, of the no. beginning of the segment. And he's not here. He's, he's also not part of the segment. And he's like, Angle? Kurt, Angle's the one yeah. that stands up to JBL, not not Ray. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, he was... Go ahead. Okay, yeah, so... Uh, Perk Angle's music hits... Um, and Cole says, you know, that, that's a great American. <laughs> and when Kurt comes out, he's like, you know, JBL, I've been having a problem. You say you represented America. Well, I represent America. And I won a gold freaking medal. With what? I've been six time uh, broken dick. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Condolences. You know, I've been six time WWE champion. He's like, well, JBL, he's like, you're really an American hero. Well, compared to me, you suck. It's like you're gonna pick on Ray? Why? Because Ray is an underdog champ. Like, why are you why are you say that? Man? He says Ray is a better champ now than JBL ever was and will be. He just, and then he also adds in, but Ray won't be champ for long because I'm gonna go beat him. Actually. It's like, <laughs> gotta gotta put your shit in. Get gotta get your shit in, brother. How bad is this Mysterio bullshit, man? Like they just make him look like a fucking fool. He's the underdog, hey. even when he's a champion. He is the it's guy. About, <laughs> that's it's about to get way worse because Rey Mysterio comes out. Yeah, with Rey Mysterio. Absolutely zero pomp, zero circuit, whatever. It doesn't no. look great. He just walks out with the big gold, or, and it looks good on him. It yeah, looks, big gold nice. looks, looks good around Rey's waist, but he oh. doesn't get the Buyaka Buyaka. He doesn't get to jump up out of the Cody Vader. Real quick, the let, me, let, me, the fireworks. let me pull this he up just, on the pod. Yeah. Look at, look at Rey. For his match against Kurt Angle, look at the little promo art. It looks funny. Why does he look like that? <laughs> All right, can you show clip art Ray from the April yes. uh, 14th episode? Yes. All right, yeah, look at that. Look That's at what they did guys. for the SmackDown after WrestleMania. <laughs> then they look great. Yeah, tell me, tell me more, Joe. Sorry for interrupting. Anyways, Ray comes down. He he's he gingerly walks down to the ring very slowly. Very sad, in fact, too. But some ha- he still, you know, high fives some fans on the way um, to the ring. And once he gets into the ring, they all circle so that Ray can get a mic. Um, and before Ray can even say anything, you know, the fans start like chanting. They start chanting Eddie, 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 and JBL just hounds them again. He's like, "See, you're not a champion. They can't even chant your name." Which fair? And fair. He says, Which is yeah. Can you even speak English? Oh yeah, dog. He said, and he like does this like bit multiple times. Every time Ray tries to talk, he's like in English, in Listen, English, hombre. Maybe they could have got away with that in 2002 when he debuted, and nobody knows who Ray is. Ray's been around for a while, and he yeah. was not. He was what, born in fucking six one nine California. Yeah, he California. was born in fucking six one nine California. Like, dude, come on. I know it's the be a fucking asshole, but like, come on, that's just silly. And His Ray... theme song literally says he's from San Diego. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's just so foul. I wish he would have. I wish he would have said it to Kurt. That would be <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> Do you even speak <laughs> English? And he goes, Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> 
Yeah! So, when Ray is finally allowed to speak, he goes, Kurt, I respect you, dog, but I'm going to beat you in Europe. JBL, dude, you're never going to get a chance. Something like that. And then JBL just is on it again. He's like, he's like, what are you two, a bunch of sissies? You guys are going to swap spit now? You guys are going to kiss? Swap spit! Yep. <laughs> yes. He, he then says, um, JBL's like, Ray, I took belts and beat two of your other little amigos. And he says, look at you. Look at you. The title's bigger than you. The title's bigger than you. And then he just gets, like, super racist. Wait, wait so he beat he, Eddie. He Who's starts, the other like, one? Uh, uh, Chris, Eddie Chris and Chris Benoit. Oh, yeah. Okay. My bad. Yeah. yeah. That makes sense. He starts doing a bit where he's like, oh, oh, that, that belt is bigger than you. Where's Ray? Where'd he go? Where's Ray? Where's my little hombre? That's, that's so bad. And then uh, Ray just kicks him in the knee. <laughs> yeah, he finally had enough. Kicks yeah. him in the knee, gives him another knee kick. Angle oh, is, is there angle on the rebound so for sick. an angle slam. And then Ray hits the 619. He almost yep. didn't get that slam, too. Like I was like ready for Angle to be the one to attack first, just because like the way they, they make Ray look during the segment. I'm like, Angle's fucking cooking up an Angle slam. But then Ray starts chopping his legs in you, half. You see it, too, in the picture when yeah. the cameraman's behind Ray. You see Kurt like 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 mad dogging behind. It was pretty awesome. I'm I'm gonna say it. I said it last week, I think, or maybe it was like two weeks ago. Rey Mysterio is like one of the greatest wrestlers ever alive. Yes. And this is what they're doing with him. It's so sad. Bullshit. And a lot of the shit they do now, twenty years later, they still make Rey look like a like a bitch like this. It's like this is the fucking greatest wrestler ever. Although, <laughs> what are you guys doing here, man? He did just come back, and he had a crutch. And like it was during a Carlito match. Also, yes, this is 2024, guys. Carlito versus Santos Escobar. It was a street fight. Carlito looked like he was ready to be in a street fight, and then the gang he got ganged up on. And then Ray comes out, and it's been like months. He got knee surgery again. Yes, this is 2024. <laughs> and Ray is now five foot three. And he comes out on a crutch, and they're all laughing at him. And he throws it down. And whatever, ma- like here, let me pull up the mask. I don't know what it was. It was a little too big for his head. He's looking like the great mooter. He was fucking <laughs> flying around. He's like 48. He's like 48. He's got like 30 knee surgeries. And he's fucking doing crazy shit. And I'm like, oh, fuck yeah, dude. And Carlito got a win in 2024. And it was a good this, match. And yeah, we're horrible. in Bizarro Land. Like, I don't know what uh, happened between 2006 and 2024 because it's been like a deep sleep. And we have to catch up, you know, a little bit on what happened. And man, Ray looks better now than he did then. Yeah. To future He's me, an aging vet. To future me, if by the time this episode airs in thirty years, if uh, if Dominic Mysterio is still a heel, I need you to go bash your head into the garage. <laughs> Fair enough. But yeah, no this this segment was good. Oh yeah, no, he did hit a six one nine also. Got it. Yeah, the six one nine, and he did not hold back either. Because sometimes guys like blast. like Ray Ray kind of like goes easy on it around the ropes to give guys time to put their like hands up. Ray like laid into this one, I'd say. Well, that's because Ray knew this is just a JBL on the daily. Yeah. Again, I'm gonna say it. Great segment, we but did it. they're oh. building up something. For nothing, because when is okay? Did we ever set up JBL as like the next contender for the World Heavyweight Championship until now? No. If he is, why is he, he the U.S. champion? Isn't this supposed did, to be a U.S. celebration? Also, he mentioned. Okay. No, sorry. Go on. No, he was he was mentioning during this promo that um, whoever won in Europe next week um, on next week's SmackDown, he would then you know, win it from them. He's like, I'd have the U.S. belt on my left shoulder and the World Heavyweight belt on my right. So, I kind of... It's just so bizarre that. that you are the U.S. champion doing a U.S. title celebration because you are American and you're now super uber racist and now you want the World Heavyweight Championship and you don't care about the U.S. championship no more. It's just kind of like that thing where why are you the champ or why did they book him to be the champ if he wants the bigger belt? Now you make the U.S. belt. Like, again, this segment... The U.S. Championship's so important, and now it's not. 
it like it took a little pivot in a weird way to where now it, the focus is on Ray Mysterio versus Kurt Angle. So why is JBL doing what he's doing? Because now Chris Benoit is in another feud. He's in the King of the Ring. He don't really care about the U.S. belt anymore. So now what does he do? Now? Oh, I guess he's going to fight for the World Heavyweight Championship. Is there nobody else? Because I want to be super excited for Rey Mysterio versus Kurt Angle next week. And it booked me to be excited about Rey Mysterio versus JBL or Kurt Angle versus JBL, but not Rey Mysterio versus Kurt Angle. Although the match is going to be good. But in the story, they're just they're still really good friends. There's no heat. Is the match going to suffer for that? Are we going to have like another segment where we're like, hey, the main event was pretty good, but, eh, you know, it's just another main event. I want Angle versus Undertaker again, baby. Give me, I'm chasing that dragon. Give me the good main events, please. <laughs> but this was a great segment in, in, like, in a bubble. So I can't complain because we don't get a lot of them. Yeah, buddy. No, I mean, it was a fun segment. Um, we, we learned how JBL truly felt. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. We learned how he truly felt, and also it was there the whole time. <laughs> we just ignored yeah. it. Yeah, I don't I don't know. Like, I, I was thinking, like, like, take it easy, JBL. Vince might actually have to pretend to fire you this time. Like, chill, bro. Come on. At least they don't have any uh, offers from, uh, was it CNBC? I forgot what we talked about. It was legit on the last episode that I just posted. Yeah, yeah he, it was on CNBC where they fired him. And now we have another segment where CNBC said, good thing we didn't hire them or take over or whatever. Fuck them. Yeah. Lord. You know, we, we, we ditch Pete in Japan and we get a good episode. Maybe we'll hear about him here. Hello, Pete. Ni hao. That's Chinese. Pete? West Side. Wow. That's Chinese. West Side. <laughs> Ohio Gazimus Peter. And then he's like, Hello. Guys, I'm I'm stuck in Akihabara. Hey guys, it's They me, took Pete. my passport. <laughs> I'm ever since I moved to Japan, I'm doing a David Lynch now. And that's just how my voice is. I am sorry. West Side. I, I'm, I'm David Lynch, West Akihabara. Side. You know what? I appreciate Pete for uh, taking the time out of his day in Japan to give us those fine words. And you've been smacked up, pal. We'll see West you next side. week. Wasaid! Wasaid! <laughs>